G'day guys, welcome back. This is the last ring pour on placemats that I'm doing today and I'm going for turquoise. So, uh, as I said, number eight, I've done various other colours on my little cards here, 30 by 40 centimetre cards and once they've dried I'll have them laminated at the office supply store so they'll be wipeable for placemats. Right, pouring medium again. Three parts Floetrol, two parts PVA glue, use craft glue, Elmer's glue all. In Australia, Elmer's school glue works because we don't get glue all. Uh, anything, just make it a craft glue, a white glue. And pouring medium of your choice. This one's global, you can use Vallejo, GAC 800, Liquitex pouring medium, whatever you choose. They're all pretty much the same, I've found. Colours. In the global, we have black and white. So in all of these, I've had black and white and then two shades of my colour. So these are the, the turquoises. There's a light turquoise and a dark one. That one's just called turquoise. This one is called peacock. It's an older colour. Uh, you probably can't get it anymore, but you can mix turquoise and white together and get very similar colour to this. And my consistency... You can see the little mound it makes. It makes quite a big mound, actually. A mound on top of a mound. That's it. Okay, so layering. I use two cups just so that I can keep my colours nice and bright. I find one big cup or one big jug, um, like a measuring cup. It just makes my colours a bit muddy by the time I've poured right down to the bottom of that big jug. So half of the colour in the first layer and these have got 50 grams of pouring medium and 50 grams of paint for a total of 400 grams of mixed paint for this size. Uh, just divide 400 by 30 to give you the ounces. Dark turquoise going in back to the black. them on the corners. Do I want black? Um, I might do white, you know. I've only got one other that's got a white corner and that was the red one. I don't want it to be the only one with white corners, so let's do white. I think that'd look nice. It's really quite thick. My white is a bit thicker than my other colours. Some colours just tend to be thicker than others, don't they? Even in the same brand, some colours are thicker than others. So just because these colours, well, these brand works for me at one to one, doesn't mean that yours will. You know, just have an experiment with it. If, if you've got a different brand, if you're not in Australia and you can't get global, just try with your colours, your brand, and, and see what works. If you've got a really thin paint, you might have to thicken it up a little bit and have two parts paint to one part pouring medium. And as I said previously in other videos, if you're using something like Liquitex Basics, which are really thick, you can go two parts pouring medium to one part Basics to get these big defined rings. If you want thinner rings that aren't as defined, then go for a thinner mix. This is just what I do. I like my rings or ribbons to be nice and wide and a nice bright colour. The thinner your mix, the more chance you've got of it muddying as well. Because the colours do blend more when they're thinner. The thicker you'll mix, the less they're going to blend. And a brighter, more defined ring you'll get. So there you go. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this series of ring pours. If 
you have any ideas of what else you'd like to see me do in a series, let me know and I'll see if I can do it. I think people just like to see how different colours work together really. And at the end of this, I will have a set of placemats that I can use. So everyone says to me, what do you do with your card? You know, well, you can frame them, you can laminate them, you can put them in a display book and just have them on the coffee table for everyone to see when they come to visit. You know, because you don't always have room to display all your art, but if you put them in a book, everyone can enjoy them. Okay, here we go. Last one. a little while for me to be able to get my nice rings. That first little bit is always a little bit on the wobbly side. So as I said before I'm getting really close down to the canvas so I can get more of a fold happening fold on top of the, the fold. You know when they make candy and they fold it like this? They fold it and stretch it when they're making candy. It's kind of like that. Okay, go with the next one. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. I think I wandered that way. And again in the center where you left off. Right, let's see if I can walk around my table just so that I don't have so much of a big black section of paint here. lose my circle though when I start moving around the table. Right, nearly there. As you get to the last little bit you can slow down with your circles a little bit. There's not much paint coming out. Your drip. And oh, I've left a little bit of a tail there. I'm going to have to just go around there. And around there. If you do leave a little blob, just make it into part of the circle. It's less likely to be noticed then once it's all been stretched out. Better off doing it now while it's all small than afterwards. Okay, so once it's all poured out, give it a torch to pop any bubbles. Because I did pour that quite quickly from the cup. And I've only just made, made up the paint as well, so it hasn't really had a chance to sit very long. Okay, and one big circle first of all to cover as much of the surface as possible. pretty colours. Off to that first corner, seeing as I've got the momentum and the weight of the paint right there. And I'm going to leave that white corner, come back. Because the turquoise is, they're quite dark I think, turquoise and black. I think it'll look nice with the white corners. Okay, back to the centre. And then off to that corner there. So the weight of my paint's already on this half of the card. So I've discovered that with these first two that I do, it's best just to touch the corner and not to take too much off. because you don't want to have this ring go over the edge. I did that in my last one and then I wish I hadn't 
it's easier to take this end off rather than this end I found it works better get a get a better result it's prettier look how these aqua rings are opening up so pretty all right now I'm going to take the weight of the paint back down and to the corner there actually I think I'm going to do I like this dark bit here so I'm going to do this first and get rid of a lot of that pale aqua first so straight down and once this paint gets a little bit closer I'll start tilting it towards the corner so you want this side to cover about the same time that one does so I've got the same distance there and there and I'll leave a little bit of that aqua on the corner really liking these aquas but you know me I do love my aquas and my blues my favorites that is so cool and calming so back to the middle I'm really liking these white corners actually I'm glad I did them white instead of the black yay me <laughs> I don't often make good decisions but I'm happy with that I don't want to lose all this dark bit here either so I'm going to go straight down and then once it's down I'll just quickly tip it over there because I want to try and keep that bit of dark turquoise I tend to always lose my dark colors especially in the middle you don't see much of the dark color there at all I don't know if I can I have to stop there if I want to keep my turquoise bring it back just clean that off so I can see where the edge is okay, I've got a little bit of it left actually I don't know that I like that now this strip of white through there do I like it? Mm, no I don't think I do actually I think I'll have to get rid of it Mm. But then there's not a lot of white left, is there? Let's go to that corner. I'll keep, I might take some of this light blue off and leave the dark aqua with the white. I think I'll do that. gone over see how that looks yeah that's better still got a little bit of the white there just hasn't got that huge big strip right across the top that I didn't like I'm happier with that and I've still got four white corners woohoo which is lovely like the white corners Otherwise, it would be quite dark. Okay. Um, just going to see if I can open up some of this here, just a touch. You can play around with your composition, see what you like, see what you don't like, see what's working for you. that like that woohoo number eight done that's the last of the series guys hope you've enjoyed that give you some ideas on what colors you can use together uh, all of these have just been black white and two colors a light and a dark in the same shade just fix up these little corners where I've touched them to lift it up there we 
go. How's that one? A little tiny bit on that one as well. Wow, I love this. The teal one was my favourite, but now I think I like this the best. There's a fly buzzing around. I'm going to have to get it. They always land in my paintings. I don't know what it is. Maybe they like the smell of the paint. They dive bomb into my paintings. I've ruined so many with flies. And they don't just land there and stay. No, they land there and they walk around and then they turn around and they come back and they ruin the whole thing. Now, oh, the only thing I can see that I've maybe done wrong here is See, I didn't catch my tail, so I don't have a perfect little circle in the middle. But it's not, it's not too bad. I can live with it because I really love the rest of it. And I like how I've got my white corners and I've got this bit of white through here. Just enough. And there's a little bit of white through there. Okay. Uh, I'll take you in for a close-up. I've got some more on the table behind me. The ones that I did previously. And I'll just show you those as well while I'm at it. Take my gloves off. So I'll take the, the camera, I'll zoom in for you first. There we go. Oh, my ladder's creaking, I'm going to have to oil it. Can you guys hear that creaky ladder? Alright, so I'm going to take this down. And I actually did four paws this morning, but I'm only uploading one a day for you. Otherwise, you just get sick of me, won't you? Four in one day. Way too much, Julie, in one day. Way too much. Okay, now let me see if I can pick this up. Woohoo. Carry it over. Put it over here with the others. So those are the four that I've done this morning. You would have seen the others, I would have uploaded the others already. But I did four today. Did the pink. Oh. Kind of looks a bit yellow in that light. Stay out here. Did the brown, did the green and the turquoise. So you get an idea of what they're going to look like as a set. Really happy with them. So as I said before, if you want to know about my card, I'm not going to answer everyone's question repeatedly week after week, month after month, just jump on the Australian Acrylic Pouring Facebook group, do a search for card, it'll come up with my eBay links and also Amazon links and other people as well will be talking about where they got theirs from so have a look at that and uh, hopefully you can get some, they, they're great for practicing on, we're just doing little pours. Okay I'll see you for the next pour, bye for now.